so next example number 8 is a man tosses two fair dice what is the conditional probability that the sum of two dice will be 7 given that the sum is odd part number 2 is the sum is greater than 6 and part number 3 is the two dice are the same outcome so this is the question from conditional probability first of all you have to make the sample space these 36 outcomes will be written in the set of sample space as a, you know from your previous lecture. So the first condition <coughs> which is written uh, prior to all of the conditions will be <coughs> mentioned at set A. So here the set A is the sum of two dice will be seven. So other are these sub conditions. <coughs> so then next will be the uh, set B the sum is odd then next set C is the sum is greater than 6 and for the set D the two dice had the same outcome so now we have to find the elements from all these sets just look at the sample space uh, in set A the sum is 7 so 1 6 2 5 3 4 4 3 5 2 6 1 all these entries will be written here in set A and for set B the sum is odd so uh, like this 1 2 1 4 1 6 all these entries will be written whose the sum is odd and next <coughs> for, uh, set C is the sum is greater than 6 so for example this one 1 6 2 5 2 6 and so on so all these entries will be written in the set C so for set D, the two dice had the same outcome, meaning uh, the entries of set D will be 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, and 6, 6. So these are the entries of set D. And uh, uh, first look at the formulas which have to be utilized in the conditional probability. So probability of A over B is equal to probability of A intersection B over probability of B and so on so that's why we have to find out the intersection of that terms so probability of a intersection b <coughs> in set a the sum is 7 and it in set b the sum is odd so all the entries of sum a existing a, a, a exist in the set b so that's why a intersection b equal to set a so all these entries will be written here and a intersection c a set is the sum is 7 and C set is the sum is greater than 6. So in every entry of A is also in common with set C. So that's why A intersection C is, a, is a also equal to the entries of the set A. And A intersection D, A is the sum is 7 and D is the two dice at the same outcome. And no dice having same outcome whose sum will be 7. So that's why there will be no entry and it is a empty set. That's why A intersection D is equal to 5. Probability of A is equal to just count the entries of set A. There are the six entries from set A. That's why 6 over 30 is <coughs> probability of B. In set B, there are the odd sum is odd. So that's why there are eight, 18 a, a entries whose sum is odd. So that's why probability is 18 over 36. Probability of C, the entries whose who sum is greater than 6. And if we count all these entries, these will be found to be 21 entries. Probability of D, two dice have the same outcome and these are the six entries. So that's why probability is 6 over 36. And now if we find the probability of intersection, then probability of A intersection B, because just look at the intersection, there are six entries in the A intersection B. So that's why 6 over 36. And similarly, the probability of A intersection C is equal to 6 over 36. And probability of A intersection D is equal to 0. <clears throat> because you know there is no entry in this set a uh, zero entry in this intersection so zero over number of sample space will be equal to zero using the definition of the conditional probability we get probability of a over b is equal to probability of a intersection b over probability of d just uh, put in all these values and do the calculation and your answer will be one over three for the next just this you will replace the word b with the c 
so here will be c c and c so just put in the corresponding values and the answer is will be 2 by 7 and similarly by replacing c with for d for, uh, this with the d so that will be zero that answer will be zero independent and dependent events two events a and b a in the sample space s are defined to be independent or statistically independent if the probability that one event occurs is not affected by whether the other events has or has not occurred so if the occurrence of an event does not affect the occurrence of other events so then their events are actually the independent events probability of a over b is equal to probability of a because the associated probability of b does not affect the probability of a and probability of b over a is equal to probability of b it then follows that two events a and b are independent if and only if so if this relation holds then the events are said to be independent probability of a intersection b is equal to probability of a multiplied by probability of b and the events a and b are defined to be dependent if this relation changes into an equality if probability of a intersection b is not equal to probability of a multiplied by probability of b this means that the occurrence of one of the events is in some way affects the probability of occurrence of the other event so that's why these events are said to be dependent Example number 9 is let A be the event that a family has children of both genders and B be the event that a family has at most one boy. So children of both gender mean the boys and, and girls are mixed uh, in both genders and at most one boy means there can be maximum one boy and there is a limitation on boys and there is no limitation on the girls. If a family is known to have three children, then show that A and B are independent events. Part number two is four children, then show that A and B are dependent events. So let B denote a boy and G a girl, then the equiprobable sample space S would be. So we first we have we are going to solve the part one. So there are the three children of the family. So we will have to find the permutations in sample space. You will uh, the uh, this sample space will be same as you have uh, uh, as you have performed the work of sample space for three coin toss. But here the difference will be that here boys and girls will be involved. So you will just start from three boys and induce one girl and shuffle uh, its position and then induce two girls and then shuffle its position and finally induce three girls. So and there are actually eight entries of this sample space so the two events which are given a event is the children of both genders because you know that a be the event that a family are children of both genders so just look at the sample space which uh, uh, which have the both genders only first and last entry will be excluded and all other entries have the children of both genders so these six uh, entries will be written here and just look at the b group at most one boy at most one boy means look at this one there can be maximum one boy because you know this has a two boys this will be discarded but this one all these four entries will be written this is a one boy one boy and this relation uh, has at least one boy means there is no limit on the girls there is only limit on the boys so that's why we have uh, discarded the uh, first entries but we will have to take uh, other relevant entries because this condition holds uh, this factor definitely also has the three girls but here the boys uh, quantity is also not more than one so the event a intersection b is because you know uh, for proving the independent events you have also have to find out the a intersection b just take the intersection and here actually this the boys and girls all the, the these values uh, will exist uh, in, in our combination
तो ए इंटरसेक्शन बी इज एक्चुअली यू जस्ट टेक द इंटरसेक्शन हेयर द बी जी टी एंड दिस वन इज अ जी टी टी so we want to take the intersection a intersection b so from the uh, just look at the b group at most one boy you have the four entries actually and actually this entry just misprint on the book and uh, this is just repeated this b double g this is actually a single entry so there are total four entries and if we take the intersection this will be excluded and another three entries uh, will intersect with a so that's why these three entries b double g g b g and double g b so these combinations will be written in the intersection form so thus their respective probabilities are first probability of a there are the six entries so 6 over 8 and we just simplify and 3 by 4 probability of b there are the four entries actually because you know one is just uh, misprinted this b double g this is only a one entry this is not so 4 over 8 is equal to 1 by 2 and probability of a intersection b is 3 by 8 so because you know these are the three entries so probability of a into probability of b just put in the values and make the calculation the answer will be 3 by 8 and if you look at the uh, intersection answer that is also 3 by 8 so that's why this is equal to probability of a intersection b and hence a and b are independent even so part 1 uh, has been proved and so now we will move towards the part 2 and the procedure will be same just the sample space will be changed the sample space has may be represented by the 16 equally likely outcomes in this sample space you will start by four boys first and use one girl shuffle the position of that girl then and use two girls and then shuffle the position of uh, uh, girls and boys in double combinations then and use the three girls and uh, shuffle the position of the boy and then find the and use the four girls so uh, 2 raised to power 4 and actually there will be 16 entries of this sample space so then the event a you know have the children of both genders so first and the last entry will be excluded and other or entries will be written here and for the set b at most one boy so at most one boy means where the one boy has been started from this one b triple g and so on up to this 4g so that's why these are actually the written here and if we just take the intersection from a, a take intersection a intersection b and then only this entry will be excluded and all other entries will remain same so the finding the probability of a there are the 14 entries from a group 14 over 16 equal to 7 by 8 and probability of b is actually there are five entries here so 5 over 16 because 16 are the number of sample space and probability of a intersection b is equal to 4 over 16 equal to 1 by 4 just find probability of a multiplied by probability of b 7 by 8 into 5 by 16 and if you find out the answer so uh, definitely it will not be equal to the 1 by 4 so that's why this is not equal to probability of a intersection b and hence a and b are dependent events then the next uh, theorem 5 is the base theorem if the events a1 a2 uh, so on up to ak form a partition of sample space as s that is the events ai are mutually exclu exclusive and their union is s s means sample space and if b is another any other event of s such that it can occur only if one of the ai occurs then for any ai so you have many events but b is a particular event uh, that it 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 can be occurred 
uh, if one AI occur so then for this the base theorem is applied uh, if you have many events and then you have to find out the uh, one particular event then we have to apply the base theorem so just look at the statement and, and we will also solve the numerical problem then you will also understand uh, this formula Pro probability of ai over b is equal to probability of ai into probability of b over ai divided by summation i is equal to 1 to k probability of ai into probability of b over ai uh, for i is equal to 1 to k so this one is a single single entry and uh, here uh, it will be the summation of the all entries Example number 10 is in a bold factory machine A, B and C manufacture 25, 35 and 40% of the total output respectively. So there are the three machines and these are the output of these machines in a bold factory. Of their outputs 5, 4, 2% respectively are defective bolts. So these are the defective bolts uh, actually from this 5% uh, from machine A, B and C. A bolt is selected at random. Any single bolt is selected at random and found to be defective. What is the probability that bolt come from machine A, B, C? So, uh, then the priori probabilities before the information that the bolt is defective are. So, first of all, we will take the probability data from the statement. So this production is actually indicating that that will be, uh, actually this one uh, sh shown in the percentage and I have told you that uh, the percentage is also the unit of probability and also uh, the probability for any machine will be equal to its production probability be, uh, because you know probability of A is 25% so if we convert it into decimals it will be 0.25 and probability of B is 0 0.35 and probability of C is 0 0.40 because these machines have so much production and so uh, that's why mathematically we can indicate it a, a equal to probability of their machines. Let E represent the event that a bolt is defective. So then the conditional probabilities are. So if we indicate the E is the event that the bolt is defective then this one 5% uh, of their outputs are defective from machine A. So we can write it as probability of E over A. Probability of defective bolt from machine A equal to 5%. 5% means 0 0.05 if we change percentage into decimals. And similarly, probability of E over B is equal to 0 0.04 and probability of E over C is equal to 0 0.02. The outcome with their respective probabilities may be shown by a field diagram as below. Now we have to make the tree diagram uh, on the basis of our given data set. First of all, we will take the three machines A, B, C. Here is the production data in the form of probability of A is 0 0.25, the probability of B is 0 0.35 and probability of C is 0 0.40 as uh, we know from previous slide. And similarly, from each machine we will def, uh, separate the uh, non-defective portion and, def, uh, and defective portion so here first one is the probability of defective bolt from machine a this was the prior probability and next one is the conditional probability e probability of e over a is 0 0.05 because there are five percent chances of defective bolt from machine a and just uh, Imagine also we want to interest it to find the probability of non-defective bolt from machine A. Just apply this formula probability of non-defective. E bar over A means non-defective bolt from machine A is equal to 1 minus probability of defective. So 1 minus 0 0.05 answer will be 0 0.95. So definitely 95% bolts are non-defective and 5% bolts are defective. And if we make the joint event then these two values will be just multiplied this p is for the defective and this n is for the non-defective and d is equal to probability of a into probability of e over a and so on for the other machines a probability of defective bolt from machine b is 0 0.04 
and just 1 minus 0 0.04 will be non defective probability of e over b it is equal to 0 0.96 and similarly probability of e over c is equal to 0 0.02 and probability of e bar over c that is non defective bolt from machine c is 1 minus 0 0.02 and that will be 0 0.98 now probability of a over e is is a posteriori probability uh, that the selective selected defective bolt came from machine a so actually this is the probability related to the machine a probability of a over e that the uh, defective bolt come from machine a therefore by base theorem now we will apply the base theorem so just uh, we have transform our formula in this format probability of a over e is equal to probability of a into probability of e over a over summation of, summation of all machines and, and this one probability of a into probability of e over a plus probability of b into probability of e over b plus probability of c into probability of e over c just put in the values this probability of a is 0 0.25 this e, e probability of e over a is 0 0.05 and just divided by all these values probability of a is 0 0.25 and e over a is 0 0.05 and so on for every tree a just uh, find out these parameters from the above tree diagram and put in the values and just make the calculations and you will find the answer 0 0.362 so this is the probability for machine A and if you convert it into percentage it will be 36.2 percent so similarly the posterior probabilities of machines B and C are so probability of B over E so you will just replace, replace this A with B and this A with B and this A with B so just replace these with B and the remaining portion will be same and so uh, you will um, uh, find the answer of probability of b over e is equal to 0 0.406 and similarly when you replace b with c and then you will obtain probability of c over e is equal to 0 0.23 t 0 0.232 and uh, you have to make these calculations by yourself so this was the numerical problem associated uh, with the base theorem hopefully you understand this uh, question